I'm about to get started on finishing our basement. Now there are many excellent tutorials on YouTube from professionals and contractors about the detailed steps involved in finishing a basement. For example, for framing, wiring, insulating, drywall, and so on. But I found that there are some gaps, especially if you have some unique challenges for your basement like I have. And the one thing that I noticed that I didn't find any coverage on on YouTube is the things that you probably ought to consider doing prior to getting underway with framing. Now for this, I'm actually talking about infrastructure and prep. So what do I mean by infrastructure and prep? So for infrastructure, I'm thinking about, you know, big structural changes potentially to your concrete walls. You know, for example, increasing the size of one's windows or even maybe adding a doorway for a walkout, but also, you know, penetrations through the concrete, you know, to add utilities that are below grade. You may also have a lot to do with the floor. You may want to add or move plumbing in, in the floor for drains and things. Or if you have water infiltration issues, perhaps you need to add a perimeter drain or you know, just deal with you know, vapor barriers and things of that nature. Or maybe you're even getting carried away and adding uh, you know, radiant floor heat. You can also just think about infrastructure as utilities in and out of one's basement. So for some of those, you can access your garage, for example, through your rim joist if you have an attached garage, or various you know, parts of your, of your yard through the rim joists, you know, for example, sprinkler control wires and so on. And while you have the, the, the floor joists exposed, you know, you have all kinds of potential access to the rest of your house to, to bring utilities into your basement, like, like you know, electricity and water and so on. But also you have access to other parts of your house if you need to run around networking or audio and so on, you know, th throughout your house. So my plan is to cover some of the things that I've done here in my basement with, with the hope that it may help you think about some of the infrastructure that you could add to your house that perhaps things you haven't thought of before, you know, prior to actually getting underway with framing your basement. So for prep, I'm just thinking along the lines of the things that you can do in your basement prior to framing, just to make the, the process of framing and, and all the other steps a little bit easier, things that you may find that you need to do anyway, but it would be easier to get those things done while your basement's empty and relatively uncluttered. Prior to moving into our house 28 years ago, we replaced our basement floor because it was heaved and believed that there was a water infiltration event sometime in its past. We installed a perimeter drain and a sump pump I subsequently rerouted the discharge to the front of the house, bored a hole through the concrete wall, and dug a trench out to the ditch in front. We have not experienced any water problems in the basement since we moved in. While we were at it, we increased the size of our windows, partially to let more light in, but also to aid in removing the chunks of concrete and to get the new concrete into the basement. I also had to relocate my water main as the original line was now too close to the window to avoid freezing. We added an electric subservice to our basement, so we have a dedicated breaker panel just for the furnace, the freezer, the sump pump, and so on. Plus, it'll make it much easier when I get to the wiring phase of my project. We bored a number of holes through the back wall of our basement to take plumbing into our backyard, the lowest of which actually feeds a number of frost-free hydrants so that we have water available year-round. The upper hole 
about two feet above the lower one is actually there to support our sprinkler system. The filter at the top feeds a coffee pot in the kitchen above. Speaking of sprinkler system, I installed a patch panel and ran the sprinkler control wires from the garage through the rim joist into the basement and then through another rim joist from the basement to the outside. I had also relocated the phone line from the back of the house around to the side. While we were remodeling the family room in our house, which is on a different level, I went ahead and took the opportunity to install a whole house vac. Having access to all the floor joists on both levels allowed me to install the plumbing and the outlets. Here's an example of the outlet that I installed in the garage. While I had the floor joists all exposed on both levels of my house, I went ahead and installed wired internet, phone lines, video cables, and in-wall speaker wires. Now I realize this is sort of a thing of the past, but hopefully this will give you some idea of the type of infrastructure you can add to your house while you have your floor joists and rim joists exposed. In an attempt to future-proof our house for video, internet, and so on, I ran a number of lengths of one inch PVC from the basement to other parts of our house. The entertainment center in our family room, my office, and the master bedroom. We could have also extended our gas line into our laundry room and our fireplace. We elected not to do that. Instead, we replaced our fireplace with a more up-to-date EPA2 wood-burning fireplace. We did extend our gas line into our kitchen when we replaced our electric range with a gas range. The contractor used a long length of flex line that he routed over what's going to become the closet under our stairs. So I needed to get that relocated and have a number of heat ducts installed. In the process we discovered that our furnace really needed to be replaced so we went ahead and got that done. And while we were at it we replaced our electric water heater with a power vented gas fired water heater which utilizes a 3 inch PVC exhaust which needed another hole drilled through our rim joist. As our garage is adjacent to our basement I went ahead and stubbed in compressed air and I added a length of 1 inch PVC conduit from the garage to our utility room which will allow me to fish in you know, either a high-speed internet or cable in the future. When we replaced our electric water heater with a gas water heater, we had the option of installing a tankless water heater, which would have required replacing our three-quarter inch gas line with a one-inch gas line. Though we elected not to do this, this would have been an excellent time to do so. One of the main uses of compressed air in my basement Will be for a spray paint booth in my shop area. The spray paint booth uses a four inch exhaust which required a four and a half inch hole in my rim joist. Another excellent thing to get done prior to framing. Finally, I needed to relocate the water main and the feed to a hose bib in front of our house as both were located below the floor joist which would interfere with my framing. I also needed to relocate a junction box, which is located directly above what's going to become a cedar line closet. Before I installed most of the infrastructure in the area that will become the utility room in our basement, I finished the concrete walls using ordinary drywall joint compound. Earlier this year, I put together a video about how I did this. I will provide a link if anybody is interested. Unfortunately, one of the first preparatory steps I had to do in my basement was to grind the epoxy paint that I had previously applied from the floor in what will become the shop area of my basement. Originally, we were going to use this area as a storage room 
which is why we went ahead and, and painted the floor in the first place. But now we plan to install vinyl composite tile, otherwise known as VCT, which requires bare concrete. I also needed to remove the epoxy from the control joints. If anybody is interested in how I did all of this, let me know in the comments below and I'll put together another video. Notice, I also removed the conduit and electrical outlets from the wall and what will become my shop. I had a number of bridge ties that were installed far too long, which I needed to shorten. So I had to pull out the nails, trim them shorter, and re-nail. I plan on installing inch and a half thick foam board directly to the concrete walls, and I want to get it as flat as I can before I actually glue it to make it stick. So I went ahead and knocked down all the high spots left over by the forms, so the, you know, the joints between the plywood and the knots and so on. So this kind of just shows the amount of material that was left over from that process. Even though we had installed new windows, 28 years really took its toll on the window frames. And when they were installed, you know, the contractors weren't super careful, so there was some cement left on the frames and so on. So while the basement was completely empty, I decided that was a good time to take advantage of that fact. I went ahead and removed that concrete, sanded down the rust, and primed and painted these window frames. The south side of our house hangs over the basement wall by about two feet. The insulation that was there was pretty substandard, so I went ahead and replaced it with R30 insulation. Another task that was far easier to do prior to framing. Technically, I suppose this is part of framing, but I went ahead and installed the blocking above the walls that run parallel to the floor joists because this is far easier to do before I actually get the foam insulation glued up to the concrete. If you found this video useful at all, please give me a like below and comment either way. And consider subscribing to my channel to follow along with me as I finish my basement. Now I don't plan on recording every step of the process as there are already many excellent videos available on YouTube that cover the detailed steps. But I do plan on showing some of the techniques that I employ as a do-it-yourselfer working alone using relatively simple and inexpensive tools. I also plan on covering some of the challenges that I plan to face that may prove useful to my viewers.